All right, my name is Aaron Fields, um, and this is just an extra credit video um, on buffer overflow exploits for my CSE 334 system software security class with Dr. Josh Pauli. Um, we have here just a uh, directory listing of um, the source code files that you should have. Um, we'll just do a quick cat on the get sp.c file, which we'll be using later. Um, so copy this down. Um, you're going to need that program later. Um, and also the vulnerable program ec.c. Um, you'll notice the uh, string copy function there, which is the essentially what makes the program vulnerable to a buffer overflow exploit. Um, next, we need to disable ASLR because it is enabled by default on um, Ubuntu, which is what we are using um, in this video. Um, you can just do a sudo su um, and as root then do echo zero slash proc slash sys slash kernel slash randomize underscore va underscore space um, and do the same thing for xx shield which is in the same folder there um, and you can test to make sure that ASLR is disabled by running the git sp program um, if you get the same number every time um, ASLR is disabled and you're good to go if you're getting different numbers um, you need to disable ASLR still um, so next, let's just uh, compile the uh, ec.c program because there's some special flags that we need to use. Um, you will need to compile this as root, um, so do a sudo su again. Um, and then use the fno stack protector to disable some of GCC's um, stack smashing um, protections. Um, and also use the exec stack flag and probably that m preferred stack boundary equals 2 flag. Um, and the ggdb just adds some debugging um, symbols. Then do a change mod U plus S to make the program run as root every time you run it, um, just kind of like the password program for example. Um, and you can run the program, um, it just takes one command line parameter um, and it basically just spits out whatever you put in that command line parameter. Um, so next we're going to use some inline Perl to attempt to um, get this program to uh, do a segmentation fault um, or crash essentially because we put in too much input. Um, so the syntax is pretty simple, just um, a tick Perl dash E quote print um, single quote A single quote X 300 a number of times basically quote semicolon tick. Um, and we're just going to do this until we can um, determine roughly how many A's or bytes it takes for the program to crash. Um, so at 406 here, it's still seg faulting. Um, we'll try 404. We got an illegal instruction, so we're closer. Um, at 405, it seg faults again. Um, so we know we're working with somewhere around um, 404, 405 bytes. So next, um, let's hook up the EC program to the GDB debugger. Um, so you can do that just by running the, the command shown there. Um, and then you run the program by typing run. Um, and we'll just do some of the same inline Perl that we did before. Um, we'll try this one um, 403 times um, just for starters um, and see where that gets us. And it exited normally, which is what we expected. Um, so let's try 404 this time. That time it showed we got an illegal instruction. So let's look at the registers quick. Um, the EBP, the base pointer, and um, the EIP register, which is the instruction pointer. Um, you'll notice that all those are just kind of, um, yeah, random uh, gibberish. Nothing too special happened. But if we do, um, 405 A's, you'll notice the 41, which is hex for a capital A, which means that we're just beginning to overwrite the instruction pointer register, um, and we've completely overwritten the base pointer. Um, so this is good. Um, this means that just by looking at it right now, um, I'm thinking that we're just going to take about 408. We can test that here just by throwing in 408. Start it again, and yeah, you'll notice a 4141 there. Look at the registers again, and yeah, they're completely overwritten now. 
Um, so yeah, you just exit out of the debugger. So we know it's going to take 408 bytes of data in order for us to completely overwrite the instruction pointer, which is what we have to do in able to um, execute our shellcode. Um, so the next step then is to figure out where the current um, ESP is at. And you can do that by running the git sp command again. Um, so just remember that value there. Um, and we'll look at my notes here. Um, we've got 408 bytes to work with. Now, generally, um, you'll want to set about half of those bytes to be no ops. Um, you can do that with the Perl command there, um, Perl e print um, slash x90, which is a no op um, in hex, and just you know 200. Um, and then your shellcode, um, which is in the SC file, which should also be contained in that folder. Um, and that shellcode is 53 bytes long. And you can do that by typing, or you can figure out the length of the shellcode by typing um, wc-c and then the name of the file, which would be sc. Um, and next, we'd have to figure out um, how many repeating return addresses we can have at the end of our um, exploit sandwich. Um, so we'll have 155 bytes left over after our NOPs and shellcode. Um, and that evens out to roughly 38 addresses um, if you round down. Um, and then as far as calculating the return address itself, um, we'll take that value that we got from running the git sp program and we'll subtract um, 2co in hex and that will give us that bfff0f8. Um, and you're going to have to put that um, in little endian format into that Perl command below, so that's why it kind of looks all backwards. Um, so yeah, here's what our final um, command will look like. Um, so we got a segmentation fault there, and we'll notice it's because we had to round down, which means that we're not completely overflowing the um, EIP um, uh, register. So we can just add some extra um, no ops because those are only one byte apiece. Um, so we should only have to add three, three of those, yep, um, in order to get that to overflow the buffer. So you'll notice that we are now um, root, and yeah, we have pwned the system. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, pretty simple stuff, really. Um, and just if you guys are curious, uh, this is um, the actual shell code here. This is um, Olive One's famous shell code um, basically dropped you into a root shell um, on a Unix machine. Um, and you can put that into the SC file just by um, running the Perl command you see here. It's a lot of typing. Um, so I just yeah thought I'd show it to you guys um, just in case you were curious. Um, so yeah, that's how to uh, do a simple um, buffer overflow attack um, on a uh, Linux um, Ubuntu 10.10 .10, uh, operating system. Thanks for watching.